Let's now explore the Mud and Mud 2 brush in 3D Coat. It is much like the Rapid Brush and the Clay Brush in terms of having clay type of brush behavior, meaning that it goes through surface elevations and indentations. I currently have it inverted. Let's go ahead and create another stroke. And one of the first things you'll notice is that it's a bit noisy. And that's the whole purpose here. If you hover over the tooltip, it explains that it draws noisy clay strips. If I were to choose Mud 2, it's actually going to be even noisier. Now, I have an exaggerated noise value here. The default is 100. And in fact, if you drag your slider all the way to the right, it stops at 100. But you can exaggerate it by changing the value numerically here. So let me undo. And we'll create another stroke. Again, it's inverted. You could hold down the control key to do that as well. But in this case, I want to extrude. So it's much noisier than the mud brush. However, as you may have noticed with the other brushes, such as Rapid and Rapid 2 and Scratches and Scratches 2, the second version is typically the smoother version. Currently, as of this build, the second version is actually the noisier one. I brought this to Andrew's attention, and it should be rectified in the next build. So let's use the Mud 2 brush, or the noisier one, to try and create a little bit of battle damage if we wanted to do that. I can change the radius variation. And I should mention that, like the Rapid brush, it does not respect different brush alphas. So no matter what brush alpha you use, it's going to be a blocky type of brush. Um, I've changed the radius variation here so you can see how that works. But if there was none, again, it's just a, a blocky brush. Now, the brush draw mode that I have here does modify with brush pressure the radius of your brush as well as the depth of your brush. But if I use the absolute brush draw mode, it's just going to be a, a real blocky brush like that. Okay. So, again, let's go back to trying to create a little bit of battle damage here. And you obviously would want to use something like live clay or maybe in your smooth options drop list, you could choose extra detail. So that when you hold down the control key or the control shift key combination, it will dynamically subdivide beneath your brush on the fly. That way you've got plenty of detail to create this noise with. All right, so um, we want to invert. And I want to add some radius variation. And I also want to jitter a bit. We've got to be careful not to go too high on this, maybe 0.2 or 0.3, something like that. So, still a bit too deep. I'm going to use the mud brush. I think that works a little bit better. And I'm going to exaggerate the noise degree to 150. I'll undo a few times here. Let's go back to mud. I'll check remove stretching in case it creates some spikes of some kind. Let's not use spacing. Let's change our radius variation to 100. Jitter position 0.3. There we go. All right, let's uh, increase our noise degree to 200. Let's turn remove stretching off. Yeah. Let's turn invert tool off and let it create some spikes. This would be good for hair stubble for someone who has a crew cut who wanted to create some grass blades. 
or any other spiky surface extrusions like this. Or terrain spikes that you would see maybe on an alien planet or something like that. Okay, let's go back to Invert Tool. And when you have spikes like this, remove stretching might help quite a bit uh, to make sure you don't have really nasty geometry beneath the surface. Okay. If we want to clean it up a bit, we can use tangent smoothing. Tangent smoothing is very subtle. It's not going to be very destructive. It's just going to try and optimize the geometry. As I brush over it, I can still keep that damaged surface, but kind of optimize the mesh so it's not creating problems later on. When you find a brush behavior that you like, as I've mentioned before in other brush videos, make sure to set that in your presets panel here by adding a preset, then double clicking to rename it. If you want to relocate it in the stack, you can come to the left hand side when you see the move icon, you can drag it to place it inside the list here, wherever you like. And if you later make an update to it, you can just right click and choose to update preset, okay? So that will conclude this overview of the MUD and MUD2 brushes. If you found this video or others helpful in any way, please remember to hit the like and subscribe button. This lets us know these videos are indeed of some benefit. As usual, thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.